sometimes it doesn't look that obvious. When hurt is done psychologically or emotionally, it's so much easier for our partners to dismiss it or to make us feel like maybe we're just too emotional. Welcome to Therapy Explained, where we explain, demystify, and destigmatize mental health and mental health treatment. My name is Denise Planner. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and your very own mental health cheerleader. Today's video is all about red flags in relationships. Now this is by no means an all-inclusive list. There are other behaviors that can be unhealthy, toxic, and dangerous. And if you want me to make this into a video series, go ahead and comment down below and I can put that together for us. Of course, before we jump into the video, as always, if you're not already subscribed, make sure that you are so that you can get more videos on all things mental health and make sure to follow me on Instagram so that you can get your cheat sheet on today's video. But without further ado, let's talk about some red flags in relationships. Number one, manipulation. Now this one is actually harder to realize that it's happening when we're in it. We think that we would realize if someone's trying to manipulate us, but a lot of the times it just kind of happens to us, particularly in a relationship. What it looks like is passive aggressive statements and guilt tripping, saying things like, I guess you don't love me. I guess you don't care. This is so hurtful and horrible for me. The aim of a lot of this behavior is to get you to do something again that you're not comfortable with or perhaps to not do something that you would want to do in order to police your behaviors, the people that you talk to, the things that you engage in, the things that you don't engage in, and overall have a sense of control over you and your life. Now, small comments don't necessarily mean break up with this person and run away, but it's important for us to recognize, am I doing the things in my relationship based on guilt or am I doing these things because I genuinely want to do them? If more often than not, you're doing things out of guilt, it might be helpful to take a look at why you're feeling this guilt. Where is it really coming from? Is it coming from my partner? Or is it coming from expectations that I have set on myself? So there's a lot still to process there, but this is, if this is something that you're noticing is happening for you, it's important that you address it. And if you have a therapist, bring it into session and process it. Number two, gaslighting. Now, I hope to have a whole video on gaslighting and what it is exactly, but essentially what it means is making you doubt your own experience and feelings. It really looks like them turning things around to make it your fault. It's similar to manipulation and guilt tripping in that, again, it is centered in you feeling bad about what you are doing, whether or not you should feel bad about what you are, what you are or are not doing. Gaslighting is one of the main features of toxic relationships, of abusive relationships. So if I'm talking about this and this feels very familiar to you, I encourage you to check out some of the resources that I'll leave down below for you and get some help. But gaslighting does appear in some unhealthy relationships that are not necessarily abusive. Again, what this looks like is if you bring up an issue, if you say this is happening, somehow you end up in the conversation doubting that it even happened at all, or maybe that it happened because of something that you did and ultimately it is your fault. If this is happening more often than not, it's important for you to, again, address it. If it doesn't feel like it's in the level of abuse, then definitely still check out some of the resources. And just like manipulation, if you have a therapist, bring it up in session. Number three, controlling behavior. Now, manipulation and gaslighting are a way of trying to gain control over you and your person. But strictly speaking, just controlling, like straight up just controlling, is when someone tells you what you can and cannot do. When they almost insinuate that some of the things that you're doing, again, are hurtful to them. When you dress a certain way, when you talk to someone, it hurts them. And so therefore, you should not be doing something or you should definitely be doing something. When you feel that your partner is trying to get you to do things exactly like they want you to, this is a red flag. You should be able to talk 
to whomever you want, wear whatever you want, go wherever you want, as long as it respects boundaries. Whatever these boundaries are between you and your partner that you both feel comfortable with and agree on. And really that at the core, protect your emotional, physical, and psychological well-being. Those are healthy boundaries. And again, I hope to have a video fully on boundaries and what they are and how to set them. But again, boundaries are meant to keep you safe in every way possible. And if these are being crossed and another person, particularly your partner, is trying to control what that is, this is definitely a red flag. Number four, they're hurtful. Now, when I say this, you probably think, well, physically hurtful. That's really easy to tell. If someone slaps me, pushes me, puts their hands on me without my permission, that's hurtful. And yes, absolutely. If any of these things are happening, please check out some of the resources down below. But sometimes it doesn't look that obvious. When hurt is done psychologically or emotionally is so much easier for our partners to dismiss it or to make us feel like maybe we're just too emotional if in your relationship you're constantly feeling hurt low and bad about yourself this is a red flag process it and reflect on where this is coming from and why it's happening to you and try to address it if you feel safe doing so with your partner if you immediately thought, I don't feel safe and comfortable talking to my partner about this, that itself is a huge red flag. You should be able to address things with your partner if you feel uncomfortable or if you feel hurt because in theory, your partner shouldn't want to hurt you. Now, this doesn't mean that your partner has to be perfect and never hurt your feelings. Sometimes our partners will do things that are hurtful and what's important is that we feel comfortable and safe enough to say so hey, this behavior hurts, this behavior is disappointing, this behavior feels disrespectful, and really talk about it, right? Remembering that that doesn't mean that our partner is a disrespectful, hurtful, horrible person, but that they have done something that they didn't realize was hurtful. So we wanna give our partner the benefit of the doubt, we want to address it, and again, feel safe enough to do so. And if you don't, that is a huge red flag, and again, I will encourage you to check out the resources down below. Number five, avoidance. If your partner oftentimes tries to avoid talking about a specific subject, changes the subject, is always too busy, or walks away, that's a red flag. In particular, what this means is that it's going to be difficult for the two of you to problem solve what comes up in the relationship if the other person is constantly avoiding that conversation. This doesn't necessarily need to be a deal breaker, but it's important that you address it as early on as possible. Be able to express to your partner, hey, these are conversations we need to have. As I mentioned in my last point, your relationship should be one in which you feel safe bringing things up, things that feel uncomfortable, unsafe, things that make you anxious. And again, not fully blaming your partner or putting all the responsibility on your partner, but remember that that's exactly what they are, your partner. So when things are coming up for you, you should feel safe and comfortable coming together to problem solve what is happening in the relationship. Right? Ideally, we're, we're working on the idea that both of us care about one another, right? The both of you in this partnership care about one another, want to make it work, and you should be able to come to the table with that in mind and with that perspective. I hope that this video gave you some things to reflect on and look at in your relationship. If anything stood out to you, remember, this isn't an immediate, you have to get the hell out of there. But a lot of these red flags, we tend to ignore them in the beginning because it's so exciting and so great and so nice. And then we end up in a relationship that isn't really making us happy, that probably doesn't make us feel safe emotionally either. With exception, of course, of any domestic violence or abuse, again, these can be worked through. So if any of these stood out for you and you're thinking, geez, that kind of sounds like something that's going on in my relationship, I encourage you to address it. Take it to therapy if you have that resource and try to make sure that you're working together to change that, heal that, improve that together. Your cheat sheet is already available to you on Instagram, so make sure to hop on over there to get access to it. But before you do, as always, please just give this video some love in any way that feels authentic to you. 
Every like, comment, subscription, and share helps spread the word about free mental health information and education. And of course, as always, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and remember, I'm always cheering for you.